So I'm going to introduce the concept of conditional probability here. And we'll go back to looking at cards. Look, I found a nice image. So instead of me scribbling on this thing, we've got an image for you to look at. Um, this is a standard deck of 52 cards. There's your four suits. Um, you can see the cards in front of you. So uh, we're moving on now to uh, probability involving multiple events. Last section, last lesson was about single events. So we're going to look at a situation where you might, instead of just pick one card from a deck, you're going to reach into the deck of cards twice and pick two cards. Okay, so there are two events here, and we're going to say that you're, it's pick two cards. Now, it's important that for the sake of probability and the purity of what we're doing, you're not just reaching in and then grabbing two at the same time. You are choosing one and then reaching in and choosing the other. And then you notice these words, words I've written down here, with replacement and without replacement. Those are two very different problems, and that brings about this concept of conditional probability that we're going to talk about here. So, um, you're going to select two cards at random. So we're going to do the probability that you select two kings. You're going to reach in uh, to the deck of cards. You reach in one time and you get a king. You reach in a second time and you get a king. And we want to know what's the probability of that. So, we're going to start with the with replacement. Now, replacement means we put the card back after we've looked at it. So, we know how to do the first one. We know the first event. When we reach into a deck of cards, we know that there are 52 possible outcomes, and that's our denominator. We're talking about pulling out a king. Now, don't let your brain take over and say, oh, we're only pulling one king out, so my numerator is one. No, remember, it's how many total kings are there? How many ways can you select a king? There are four kings in that deck. I can look at them in the picture. So that's the probability that the first time you reach in, you select a king. Now, remember, we're selecting two cards. Only, in this case, we replace that king back into the deck so let's say, we just for instance, maybe we selected this king right here. We were like, oh, look, I got the king of hearts. You put that back, and now you reach in again. So the probability that your second card is a king is not affected because, because you could put that king back, there are still 52 cards in that deck. There are still, you can look at them, four kings to choose from. And um, whenever you are doing two events, so similar to the fundamental counting principle. The probability of both of those things happening, you get a king on the first one and the second one, you multiply the probabilities together. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. I get 16 over 2704. You're gonna do that in your calculators. Oops, I tell you what, let me do this. Let me give myself a little scoot. We don't need those so big. Um, 16 divided by 2704 in your calculator. And that one gives you 0059. We're going to go to four decimal places with these. Let's talk about that same situation only without replacement. So the first time I reach into the deck of cards, again, I can look up there. I know I'm going to have four kings. I know that's out of 52. That's the first time you reach in. Now we are not going to replace that king. So I want you to visualize one of these kings now. Let's say I reached in and I selected that king of hearts. Imagine that now not being replaced. So now it's sitting out here. So I have a king of hearts sitting out there. When you reach in the second time, take a look up there. Imagine that king of hearts gone. You only have 51 cards now to choose from. And you only have three kings to choose from left in there. You still would have the king of clubs, the king of diamonds, and the king of spades. So the probability of getting two kings without replacement, you multiply straight across. 52 times 51, 12 divided by 26, 52. That gives you 0045. So they're similar, they're close, but they aren't the same. This is because with replacement, these are independent events. So you have multiple events, and we're using the what I call and probability, meaning we got the probability your first is a king and your second is a king. And in and probabilities, we multiply, just like fundamental counting principle. If two things are independent of other, meaning the second 
event is not affected by what happened on the first one, if they're independent, then you just, um, you're just repeating that probability twice. For two things to be dependent events, that would be the, when the second event is affected by what happened in the first. And that happened to us here. Our second fraction was different because we chose a king first. So those are dependent, and we have to uh, adjust our second fraction accordingly. But it is what we call and probability. We do multiply the two events together. All right, let's look at another one, only still with cards. So I'm going to shrink this again. Um, I like that card visual, so I'm just going to sort of shrink this work. Oh, look, with replacement got shrunk, and without replacement did not. I'll just scoot that up there. We'll just put that out of the way. The without replacement. Well, I hate to have an untyped with replacement, so i got to fix it. Okay, I fixed it. All right, let's do a similar thing that uh, to what we did last time, only um, let's talk about the probability of selecting uh, two hearts. Probability of selecting two hearts. With replacement, let's do that first. These two are independent events, so it's reach in the first time, reach in the second time, multiply those two together. One does not affect the other. So now you've got to make your fraction. I have 52 cards when I reach into that deck. How many of those are hearts? There's 13 hearts. So your first fraction is 13 out of 52. With replacement means after you look and you say, oh, I got a heart, you put it back in. So the second time you reach in, you still have 52. All 13 hearts are still there. You multiply straight across. And then you're going to divide that in your calculator. And you get 0 0.0625. Now without replacement, that's where it gets sassy. So the first fraction is the same. The first time we reach in, there are 13 hearts out of 52 cards. Now, though, we have selected one heart. We reached in. We pulled out a heart. doesn't even matter which one. And that one card we pulled out is now sitting off to the side. We didn't pull out all 13. We just pulled out one card. And now we're going to reach back in. There are only 51 cards left in that deck because one of them is sitting out. And there are only 12 hearts left in that deck because, again, we have one heart sitting out here. Multiply those two e events together because it's the probability that they are both happening. Uh, oh, I should know that one. 156 divided by 26, 52. And you get 0 0.0588. So they're similar but not the same. Um, hopefully you get, uh, you get the idea with conditional probability. And um, so keep chugging through there and we'll have more videos here coming up.